My name is Erin and welcome to Crafting with the Clearwater Library System Wizarding Wands Edition. Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own wizarding wand using hot glue, a chopstick, and a paper and some acrylic paints. It's a very simple process. So I hope you enjoy. Now we're gonna go over what is included in your kit if you have registered through library calendar to reserve one. First, you're gonna have a sheet of white paper and a chopstick, and that's what we're going to use in building the core of the wand. You will also have hot glue, mini hot glue sticks, a paintbrush, and several acrylic paints. You're going to have two base colors, which will be black and brown, and then you're going to have uh, several accent colors that are going to be metallic. Now what you will need to provide on your own are just a few things. You're going to need a mini hot glue gun, scotch tape, a little cup of water when you're in the painting portion, and then a glass jar or a cup. This is gonna be used to rest your wand on. It's really helpful when you're letting the hot glue dry or when you're letting the acrylic paint dry. Also, I wanted to mention that hot glue, you always want to practice safety when you are doing the hot glue portion of the wand. And if you're having younger participants, I would suggest having an adult or an older teen do the hot glue portion. And then the, the younger participants can do the painting portion. So the first thing we're gonna do is build the core of our wand. What we will need for this step is the white sheet of paper, the chopstick, and the scotch tape. So what you'll wanna do, this is really simple, and this is just to give your wand some, uh, some strength to it so it doesn't bend. So we're gonna keep the chopstick in the center, and then we're just going to roll it. And then what I like to do at this point is I like to put a little piece of scotch tape just to secure the tape, or just to secure the sheet of paper to the chopstick and then you can start rolling. And so once you're down here, you're just gonna do a tight roll. And then once you're through, you're gonna secure this last piece with scotch tape. And that is the core of your wand. The next step is going to be the hot glue. So this is the step that you'll want to have somebody a little bit older doing the designing work. And this is really where you have a lot of creative outlet. If you see in my original wand, all of this detail work um, and the handle portion of it, that's all built up with the hot glue. So we're gonna wanna have our hot glue sticks on standby because if you've ever used a hot glue gun, you have to get those sticks in there ready to go while you're using the hot glue. And then you're also going to want to have your jar or your glass ready to go. So now we're just gonna start building. I usually like to do the handle first. So we're gonna start with that and we're just gonna start building our framework for the wand. You'll also want to make sure that you fill in this little hole with hot glue just to make the wand look, look more finished. All right, and then you can start making your design on 
the base of the wand here. Again, this is any type of design that you like. I was kind of going for a vine look, but you can really do anything that you like at this point in time. It's just, it's your opportunity for creative outlet. We're going to rest the wand on our glass jar to finish it up. All right, and then when you've got it to your liking, you're just gonna let it dry. And like I said, hot glue dries pretty quickly. So you're gonna wanna give it a few minutes before you start the painting process. Just remember, if you've got a resting like this on a cup or a jar, you're just gonna wanna make sure, because you don't want the hot glue to drop to one side, so you might wanna rotate it every few seconds until it's totally dry. The next step in creating your wizarding wand, after the hot glue is totally dry, you're going to want to use your acrylic paint then to design it. Now, in each kit, you're going to have your own paintbrush, but you will want your cup of water, so between the paints, you can go ahead and rinse it off. And then in each kit, as I mentioned before, you're going to have two base colors, and it's your decision which one you wanna go with. And then you're going to have some accent colors as well. So I think I'm gonna go with a black base color with mine, and I'm gonna get started in getting that base color on. When you get down to the base, and you've got no room to hold on to, this is where your cup also comes in handy, or your glass jar. Um, you can rest it on the glass jar, or you can also put it inside, depending on uh, what you're most comfortable with, but I'm just gonna rest it on top, and oops, finish up. Also, I wanted to mention, if you are using a cup, just make sure it's something you don't mind getting paint onto. And also, with acrylics, if you get paint onto your skin, uh, it, with, you just wash it off with soap and water. And then just to get that tip, I'm just gonna rest it inside there. And like I said before, if you wanna give it some time to dry, you could always get the tip a little bit later if you're afraid about getting the, some paint onto the jar. All right, so now that I've got my base coat on, I'm just gonna take a look and see if there are any little crevices that I missed. And then I'm gonna start with my accent paints. All right, so after your base coat has dried, now you're ready to put on some of the um, accent colors, which you'll have two smaller um, colors here that you can choose to do your accent colors, or if you have any of your own acrylic paint at home, feel free to do whatever you desire. So I'm gonna go with a silver accent color first, and I just wanna see how that looks here on the black. And then, so this is what it looks like with the accent color on top of it, so it's got kind of a midnight silvery 
aspect to it. And then if you want, you can go to your second accent color and you can use it to embellish the wand. I'll take a look and see. Sometimes it's nice just to put a couple little, and I might only just use this on the handle part of it because like I said I kind of just like the handle to stand out and my wand has a lots of little crevices in there so sometimes I'll just dip the paint into the crevices and blend out from there just to get that color in there and you can really use anything at home I mean the options you have with embellishing your wand, you could use glitter or I've done in the past where I've glued like a, a river stone or something on the, the bottom to accentuate it. So you have a lot of different options that you can do on your own. And like I said before, you'll wanna make sure the acrylic does take some time to dry. So you'll wanna make sure to let it sit uh, until it's totally dry. Usually that takes, it could take as long as 24 hours depending on how thick the paint is. But you know, always just test it beforehand just to see, you know, with the accent colors, since it's such a thin layer, it doesn't take quite as long. But just be patient and let it rest for a little while. Right, step five, after your wand is dry, acrylics usually take about 24 hours to totally dry, but you can just test it out to make sure. Then you are ready to practice your spells. Expelliarmus, Expecto Patronum. And for more fun events like these, make sure to visit our website at myclearwaterlibrary.com. We have an online calendar of really fun events for uh, all ages, crafting, story times, and we'll have uh, the website up on the screen for you guys to check out. Thank you. Bye.